Hello, my name is Laura Irving, and today we're going to talk about who was Molly Pitcher? Why was she an important figure in American history in the American Revolution? First, let's start by discussing the stories and eloquence. Then we're going to talk about the historical location and the narratives we remember about Molly Pitcher, the historiography, and then the interpretive dimensions. So let's start with the story analysis. There are multiple stories about Molly Pitcher. The most popular one tells of the story of a female carrying water to soldiers at the Battle of Monmouth when her husband is killed firing the cannon. There are many versions about this story about her taking the water and taking over the cannon and um, firing throughout the battle. Molly Pitcher emerges as a different, um, she is emerging of different women of the Revolutionary War period. So now let's talk about the historical location. The Battle of Monmouth took place on a hot June 28th. It was in the year 1778. The battle was not fought well with General Lee ceding the initiative to General Cornwallis. Washington would relieve Lee of his duties and his command and place the Marquis de Lafayette in charge of them. Victory became inconclusive. So now let's talk about the narratives we remember about Molly Pitcher. There are many different types of narratives about Molly Pitcher. She was an Irish woman. She was bawdy and raucous. She was, a, she was appointed as a lieutenant by Washington. She was able to receive pension for life for her actions in the battle. She might have been called Captain Molly. The virgin, the, this version changed to a virtuous heroine. Um, it was also an, act, um, an anecdotal story that used several women's stories and combined them into one story. Um, it talks about how she dressed as a man in some stories, while in other stories, her, tor her clothing was torn away in the fighting. Some stories claim her indignation forced her to take her husband's place, while others noted her noble bravery, her patriotism, and her morality, and that caused her to join the war. There are many stories and versions about Molly Pitcher, but there are none as true, and there none of them are true, and there was no woman known as Molly Pitcher. Her story is an amalgamation of different women's stories uniting as one. Molly Pitcher's story uses multiple perspectives and ideas to create her. She is not one woman, but several. Um, Mary Ludwig as a servant, Margaret Corbin, Mary Hayes McCauley, a woman disguised as a man who carried a sword, not a water pitcher, mall pitcher, a popular fortune teller, and a witch. Um, she was a woman who was immoral and low class, and perhaps maybe even died of syphilis. She is a woman who would have clung around the army camps and traded fanciful stories with soldiers. Now let's discuss the historiography. The stories begin with Molly Pitcher being of low class and of an Irish background, which would later transition to German. Um, and then eventually later stories would claim that there was no cultural heritage. In the first story, she's morally tainted and she wore men's clothing or torn dresses. She was immodest. But throughout the stories, she would change and she would merge into a modest, virtuous, upstanding woman. Lossing would write about how he would merge the many characters that were used in the Molly stories into one. And Godey's Ladies Book would sketch, would sketch Molly as a virtuous woman who was noble, brave, patriotic, and moral. They would exclude the narrative or the negative qualities given to her in the first writings, um, as well as her class and her accent. She would end as a comforting example that lacked specific details, only claiming that she was American. So finally, let's talk about the interpretive dimensions of Molly Pitcher. This became the standardization of every woman. She is a woman who everybody could look on with honor and pride, adjusting the view and ideas of her original portrait when there are none really written about her. The idea would be to standardize her and make her more acceptable to everybody who read the story. It changed her image, and the idea was a universal story that had a wholesome and useful woman of a battle that ended in a stalemate. It allowed the women to become involved and become part of a revolutionary fighting for their liberty against tyranny. The actual people are no longer part of the story and they have been left by the wayside to make way for a more universal image. This change in the writing created a folklore story that allowed the story to continue instead of being challenged as something that did not happen. Thank you. I hope you have a wonderful time learning about this.